2023 was a remarkable year for sport. Up here, an historic treble down under, a Women's World Cup. England and Australia couldn't be separated in the ashes, whilst cricket, rugby union and netball all had World Cups of their own. Golf came together for the Solheim and Ryder Cups, but the start of this sporting year was, for some, less a beginning and more a resumption. Football had only just returned after its unprecedented Winter World Cup break. Also resuming, returning, the Australian Open once more welcomed Novak Djokovic, a year on from his deportation over his Covid vaccination status. Still Novak's for Novak, but here he was back and unbeatable. His was a 22nd Grand Slam title, for Irina Sabalenka a first. Saudi Arabia's bid to become a major player in global sport was laid bare, Cristiano Ronaldo becoming the figurehead for the fledgling football league. Before the end of the year, they'd all but been awarded a World Cup. There was shock too in January after Buffalo Bills' Damar Hamlin suffered a cardiac arrest during an NFL game. The world watched on as he would eventually make a recovery. Here, rugby union's six nations. Well, that was all about Ireland. It is time for the Six Nations, and no better place to start than in Cardiff. James Lowe, all the way, cruel knife to the heart of Wales. The number one side on the planet against the reigning Grand Slam champions. Oh my goodness, breathtaking, absolutely breathtaking, thunderous Six Nations spectacle. All eyes on Ross Byrne as he gets us underway in Rome. The quest for the slam is still alive. And it's been many, many a long year since both Scotland and Ireland met at this stage of the championship with so much to play for. A slam on the line for Ireland, pride on the line for England. Aki for Henshaw! The start of the celebrations in Dublin, a fourth Grand Slam for Ireland. England's men never really got going in that tournament. The women, though, were once again unbeatable. A grand slam in front of a world record crowd, a fifth Six Nations title in a row. Their cricketing counterparts couldn't quite emulate their success. They reached the semi-finals of the T20 World Cup in South Africa, beaten by the hosts who were, in turn, beaten to the trophy by Australia. Down under, in February, St Helens were pulling off an almighty shock, beating NRL champions Penrith in Rugby League's World Club Challenge. LeBron James became the NBA's all-time leading point scorer. At Old Trafford, Manchester United's proposed takeover became one of the more protracted sagas of the year. The club did win the EFL Cup. Celtic won the Scottish equivalent before Rangers won it back, whilst Arsenal claimed the Women's League Cup. By April, protests were very much part of the sporting landscape. The start of the Grand National was delayed as more than 100 were arrested at Aintree. Derek Fox aboard Corak Rambler came home first. Fewer than half finished as arguments over animal welfare continue. A protest too on the table at Sheffield. I've never seen anything like this. The World Snooker Championship, this time the target. The headlines though were eventually written by Luca Brussel. And we are underway. The London Marathon returned to its traditional spring setting. More runners than ever before and faster. Course records in the men's and wheelchair events. Another historic occasion for women's football. There were more than 77,000 at Wembley for the women's FA Cup final, a world record for a women's domestic game. Sam Kerr helping Chelsea to the first half of their double. The second followed just days later. Chelsea are WSL champions. A domestic double for them in Scotland. Celtic's men win one better with a treble. Having already won the League Cup, they took the Scottish Premiership with four games to spare, leaving them clear to focus on victory in the Cup final against Inverness Caledonian Thistle. Celtic, the treble winners! Whilst here at Manchester City, something very special indeed was happening. It had been a long time in the making, but Pep Guardiola's side finally achieved their dream. 
The first part, a fifth Premier League title in six years. Manchester City are champions of England again. Their dominance of the domestic game without question. Still, to underline it, they went to Wembley to prove their point against their nearest rivals. City and United face off in the end game. And there's a good try. Oh, incredible. It's the fastest that's ever been scored in an FA Cup final. Gundogan, he got it, and he's got another one. Manchester City have done the double. One to go. City's continental challenge would come soon enough, but by June they weren't the only Brits abroad. 20,000 West Ham fans were in Prague for a Europa Conference League final against Fiorentina. It was, at times, ugly. It feels the best feeling I think I've ever had watching a football match. No words can describe how awesome this is feeling. I think I'm dreaming, I just can't believe West Ham have won something. Inspiration, perhaps, for Istanbul just days later, the Champions League final. Manchester weather could spoil that homecoming party. It's just unbelievable. Even now, it still doesn't seem real. Best time to be alive, the best time to be a City fan. Living the dream, love it. Away from football and in rather drier surrounds, more records. Novak Djokovic winning his 23rd Grand Slam singles title in the Paris springtime. Back here, Saracen's comeback was complete, crowned Premiership champions at Twickenham. Whilst just down the road, a dazzling moment in the Gold Cup, Frankie de Tori riding Courage Mon Ami to victory in the jockey's final Royal Ascot meeting. The start of the sporting summer, though, was dominated by one of the oldest and fiercest international rivalries. The Ashes was ultimately dampened by this Manchester weather. Still, it was quite a summer. Well, here we go. The Ashes is about to begin. What an atmosphere already here at Edgebaston. All the talk over the last few weeks, it's all gone now. There you go. Fast balls off and running. Oh, my word. Day one of the Ashes. A brilliant 100 from Joe Root. Oh, here we go. Ben Stokes does the unexpected. Yeah! And listen to Kawaja celebrate that. Oh, it's over. The Aussies. Incredible victory here at Edgebaston. Well, what a game of cricket. Uh, what a special occasion, the uh, Lord's Ashes Test Match. There it is. Steve Smith reaches his 32nd Test Century. Ooh. Johnny Best has come out of his ground and Carey's thrown the ball at the stumps. Well, that is an astonishing dismissal. Oh, you're ever going to be remembered for that. Literally the worst thing I've ever seen in cricket, that. And even in the long room, members engaging with the Australians as they walked off. I would have to think about you know, the whole spirit of the game and would I actually want to, to win a test match like that? And I, when I think about that, it's a no. I thought it was you know, totally fair. That's the rules. Um, you, know, you leave it up to the umpires. The crowd wound up by that Bairstow dismissal. Stokes for 100. Well, that is absolutely incredible. Let's go! Stump out of the ground. Australia win to go 2 0 up. Highly charged atmosphere before the start of this third test match and it's now or never for England two down in the series listen to the crowd it goes high it goes long it's a maximum for Mark Ward the Ashes are alive a fantastic game of test match cricket wonderful ground here now at Old Trafford the sun has just started to shine. Balls will catch it, and he's got him! Stuart Broad! He joins an elite club! Will the time be a factor? Well, here at the Oval on uh, Test 5, the clouds are around and there's a bit of green grass. Stuart Broad, who's just announced uh, his retirement. This will be his last match for England. It's been such an incredible ride and, uh, and a pretty long one to be honest. And just listen to this reaction. A legend of the game. 
walking away from the playing side of the game with memories that I've got and how much I'm enjoying it, you know, uh, makes me feel pretty special. There you go, Stuart Broad with a six. That's what the crowd wanted. Brilliant. He's done it. The fairy tale ending he was hoping for. Stuart Broad. One of the greatest series, if not the greatest series of all time. For the women, a different Ashes format, the same drama, the same outcome. Please welcome Australia and England. Tammy Beaumont yeah. brings up a double century. Yeah. Eight wickets for Ash Gardner, and that is the match. They pick up four points in this multi-format series. And Australia have won the game. And England will now need to win every single game in the rest of this Women's Ashes if they are to get that trophy back. England have won this game. The Ashes series is still alive. England have won the game. They're still in the Ashes. Australia have lost a bilateral series for the first time in six years. Blue skies over Bristol. England looking to keep their Women's Ashes series alive. England have won. England have beaten Woo! Australia again. England, two wins away now from regaining the Women's Ashes for the first time in close to a decade. Yeah! And Chip Boulder! Australia retain the Ashes. Yeah! Series could still be drawn at Taunton on Tuesday, but England's dreams of winning it for the first time in almost a decade have gone. In the air, should be a catch. It is! England win the ODI series, the women's ashes is drawn. It is an extraordinary achievement. This has been the best ashes series for women. Australia retaining both ashes trophies, a rivalry that was also playing out at Netball's World Cup in South Africa. Australia would eventually take that trophy home too, beating England in the final. The Diamonds have done it! The Tour de France was won by Jonas Vingago. Again, Demi Vollering won the women's event. At Hoy Lake, a genuine surprise. Just a quiet brilliance. Brian Harmon, without a win on the Tour in six years, now the Open champion. The women's event was won by another American, Lilia Vu, her second major victory of the year. With the Paris Olympics and Paralympics just a year away, the city readied itself by hosting the Para World Athletics Championships. Ten golds for Great Britain, including a 13th and 14th title for Hannah Cockcroft. Whilst back home, the event that, perhaps more than any other, signifies the British summer. A quiet corner in southwest London is now stirring. Terrific vibe everywhere. Lovely summer scene, isn't it? Wolverhampton's boy wonder, Henry Searle, is the Wimbledon champion. Neil Skopsky, overcome by the enormity of this achievement. Hewitt and Reed secure a fifth doubles title together. Mondro Sivert is the unseeded champion. The end of July saw the start of perhaps the biggest sporting event of the year, although the much-anticipated Women's World Cup began on a sombre note. A deadly shooting in host city Auckland. It is a belter of an opening match to kick us off. There's Wilkinson! That was sensational. The roar around Stadium Australia. And Cathy scores! Well attempt to lift the biggest prize of all starts here in Queensland. Stanway with a second chance. England make a winning start. Absolutely sensational! Serena Beekman's side know that a point will win them the group come what may. And for England! The goal! It's a stunner! Six for England! Centre stage and in the spotlight tonight. It's finished in Britain!
this one. Morocco are through to the last 16. Look at that. Just look at that. And there has it gone over the line. High drama. It's confirmed. The United States of America are out. Serena Beekman's ever-evolving England face their next hurdle at this era-defining Women's World Cup. This is knockout football. It's all or nothing. Lauren James in trouble here. It's penalties in Brisbane. Kelly smash and they go through! It's another tricky assignment for the Lionesses. Colombia, the lowest ranked side left in the competition. Oh, it's over Mary Ops and it's all the way in! Spain's first senior Women's World Cup semi-final in the way, Sweden. Arch up the margin! Spain a World Cup finalist. Anticipation has been building for this semi-final in both hemispheres. What a pass that is! It's Russo! History beckons. It's Spain against England to compete for the right to be called the world's greatest. How close can you get? This is danger. Olga Carmona. And Moso saved. It's heartbreak for the Lionesses. It's really hard to take. But well, we gave everything, we can hand on heart say that we gave everything, we never give in. And yeah, sometimes it's hard to take, but it's football and we're absolutely hot. Spain's win was undoubtedly extraordinary, but almost immediately talk turned from lifting the trophy to what happened amongst those celebrations. A kiss by the then Spanish Football Federation president Luis Rubiales on player Jenny Hermoso sparked global outrage. He would later be banned from football for three years. As the Lionesses returned home, heading off was men's captain Harry Kane, his transfer to Bayern Munich, one of the more eye-catching of a summer of spending that included Jude Bellingham moving to Madrid and Lionel Messi making Miami his new home. Rugby League's Challenge Cup was returning to its traditional home, Lee Leopards winning at Wembley. For the first time, the women's final was also held there. St Helens, the first to lift the trophy. And whilst they were enjoying their day in the sun over in the Budapest heat, Britain came away from the World Athletics Championships with two golds. World champion Josh Kerr! Josh Kerr in the 1500 metres was stunning. Katerina Johnson-Thompson in the heptathlon was simply something else. August also saw Glasgow host the biggest cycling event ever held. Britain finishing top of both the cycling and paracycling medal tables at the inaugural World Championships. At Flushing Meadow, Novak Djokovic took the men's title, but for once his record-extending feat wasn't the headline as home favourite teenager Coco Goff secured her first Grand Slam. Daniel Dubois left devastated after a controversial heavyweight title defeat to Alexander Usyk. Whilst golf remains embroiled in acrimony, in September the sport did enjoy two of its most spectacular events. Welcome to the 2023 Solheim Cup! What a superb day it's been so far for Team USA. They have swept the foursomes. She's gone! An ace! Are you kidding me? She's done it. Eight all. Needs to find something in answer. Holy to retain the Salam Cup on home soil. And that is what it means. Welcome 
to the Marcus Simone golf club for the first day's play in the 2023 Ryder Cup. Right at it. What a shot, what a roar. Glorious shot from Rory McIlroy. Every single match won by Europe. Oh, he has, it rattles into the back. Oh, this, this is just magnificent. Patrick Cantlay, he did it! <laughs> there is nothing like the Ryder Cup, is there? There really, really isn't. Oh, he'd be so excited if he does, and he has! Brilliant stuff. Well, that's it. Europe are the winners of the Ryder Cup 2023. Go on, boys. 2023 was a tumultuous year for Rugby Union, the crisis in the club game deepening as both Jersey Reds and London Irish folded. But September brought the start of the World Cup. Ireland had arrived at the tournament the number one side in the world. Victory over defending champions South Africa in the group stages, raising expectations further. England's build-up was dominated by the absence of captain Owen Farrell, the opening games bringing more problems. They would, though, make it through, as would Wales. Scotland, though, out before the quarter-finals, which was, in truth, where the tournament really caught light. For all of us, I think, it's like a dream come true, you know, childhood dream, kind of getting out to a World Cup with your mates, seeing Wales play in the quarter-final. It will just be right up there, you know, it's, it's such an important match for us. But where the highest hopes were extinguished, Wales knocked out by Argentina before Ireland lost a classic against the All Blacks. England were the only home nation to make it to the semi-finals, although few gave them too much chance against South Africa. I wouldn't put my mortgage on it, but why not? Why not? Yeah. I think everyone's writing us off too early. I think we're not as bad as everyone's making. To England's credit, they got within a point. Heroic defeat, but defeat nonetheless. The final was another epic. South Africa somehow again finding enough to see off old rivals New Zealand. Champions for a record fourth time. Here in October, Manchester and football was in mourning as it said goodbye to an England icon. Sir Bobby Charlton passed away, prompting an outpouring of tributes. Just days later, one of the year's most shocking sports stories as ice hockey player Adam Johnson died following an incident during a match in Sheffield. October was a busy month for Rugby League. Wigan were once again crowned Super League men's champions. The Cherry and Whites are on top. York Valkyrie triumphing in the women's competition. The domestic season then making way for Autumn Internationals. England's men's series clean sweep over Tonga, the headline act. Max Verstappen was once again crowned world champion in what was the most one-sided Formula One season in years. The twists and turns, well, they were saved for Antwerp, Jake Jarman taking gold at the Gymnastics World Championships. But all the tension was back on Simone Biles. Four golds, making her the most decorated gymnast the sport has ever seen. November brought the climax of the Cricket World Cup. Defending champions England, by their own admissions, were dismal. Whilst India's dream of lifting the trophy on home soil was dashed in the final by Australia. An incredible year for their cricketers, a remarkable year for sport. And the winner of the 2023 BBC Sports Personality of the Year is, from Nottingham, Mary Herbs. For me, I feel like this is, you know, the ultimate all-round sport and accolade, and I think us as Lionesses and obviously United as well, we've had an incredible couple of years, um, but this is just... Yeah, wow.